All right. Hello. I'm Void, and welcome to the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Edition. Um, I started, I activated English, and then I realized I should probably get this on camera. So, um, I'm just going to jump right in. If you don't know the Stanley Parable, what are you doing here? Um, yeah. Uh, yes, I've played the Stanley Parable before. Until the computer is barely visible. That seems fine to me. I like it to be a little brighter than necessary. Enter the current time. Okay. I'm going to wait for the time to turn. It'll only take a minute most. All right, about 20 seconds now. It probably doesn't need to be this accurate, but I'm uh, too late now. Four, three, two, one, and confirm. Accessibility, uh, accessibility settings can be accessed from the main menu. Okay. All right. Let's just go ahead and uh, take a look at this. Uh, we've got subtitles on, medium subtitles, background, capacity, sure. Okay. All right, we got player data settings. That's nice. Okay. I am actually going to go up to uh, full screen. Very cool. Wait, that did something? Whoa. That's not good. It's just straight up not displaying properly. Alright, it's undoing itself. Sorry about that, I thought that was a joke. It's just not, not right. Okay. Anything else going on? Nothing. Alright, let's begin the game. Uh, I'm just going to do a few playthroughs um, before, you know, going for achievements or anything. I don't really have a plan here, but um, I'm eager to this see what has changed. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company okay. in a big building where he was employee number 427. Yep. Employee number 427's job was simple. Mm -hmm. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Yep. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him okay. what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. The graphics this aren't as nice as I was expecting. Did every day I think this may be the same graphics as last time. Year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in. I mean, this game isn't like super reliant on graphics or anything, job. but it would have been nice to have. Stanley you know, it, it's a new version. It could have been, could have been a bit more polished. And then one day, regard. something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Mm -hmm. Something he would never quite forget. Mm -hmm. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. I will not be doing no the um, to give him baby mini game. Call a meeting. Uh, um, Hi. Properly. Never in all his years at the I'm, company. I'm just not that this committed. Happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, 
frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest And as far as I know, there's no achievement But as he came so, to his wits you know. and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. No, I don't think I will. Come on. You can't jump. Achievement get. Also, achievement unlocked. Get your first achievement. Well, they're really not going to say anything? All of his co-workers were Oh, gone. damn it. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I'm going to leave the door 430 thing for now because that takes a while. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. I'm not going to go out the window yet. I know about that, though. I wonder if they did anything with turning the monitors off. Okay. Um, sorry about my voice. I am a little sick, so uh, if you, if, if, I'll try not to be sick into the microphone. <laughs> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. This door is unlabeled. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Mm -hmm. Stanley simply stood here, drinking yeah. it all in. I love this painting. I love this painting. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously <laughs> vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Yeah. What's outside? A flat texture of lines. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. <laughs> Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue, but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. I'm committed. Oh, I got up. I'm on the plant. Alright, I'm not that committed. <laughs> I'm not that committed. At last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Yeah, let's go this way. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Okay. Into the, into the yeah, there was office, not a single person the, here the either. meeting room. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up <laughs> to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Sounds good to me. <laughs> profits, profits, profits. Stripes requires more secondary research. Colored in segment. The stock market somewhere here. Pie. Line graph. What do, what do people want? Things? Happy feelings? Violet James, you are fired. Oh my god. In triplicate. Money. More money. Things but with money to buy more things. Graphs. Graphs about things and money. We have our new product. Bi-quarterly post-review review. Size of demographic. Teenagers. Space between the teenagers. What? Okay. Let's go. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. Did so he you get the broom closet ending? Track. It's my favorite. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something crouching. to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Yes. Standing around doing nothing? Yes. Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm I'm genuinely confused. Trying to do parkour. Despite not being able to jump. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Mm-hmm. That's exactly why I went for it. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom <laughs> closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. <laughs> I hope your friends find this concerning. <laughs> But concerning my friends is my favorite ending. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> how do you get a job using drug money? Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right Pay now. Pay off the... You're dead. HR? You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and we're just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert nope. someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. It's, um... Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby... Unfortunately, I am still alive. This computer is dead. They have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics yep. and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming yep. so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. Cool. All right. When you've done that, just step out into the hallway.
Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. I take that as a challenge. You too. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. The fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. All right, I think that's it. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. No. Oh, God. Oh, what is this? There's actually something there. I can't quite read it, but I'll screenshot it for later. I can't crouch and screenshot at the same time. Alright, that, that'll have to do. Um, it'll at least remind me that it's here. There's some pictures of cacti and what looks like an owl on a motorcycle or bicycle or something. Um, anyways, let's continue on. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. The maybe, insanity ending. Himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his oh God. feet when he looked down? Oh God! Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to mm. have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, hmm. and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to mm -hmm. all people in their dreams, mm -hmm. the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? What do you mean? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as right. awake New right goal. now as he's Walk through a door. in oh, his life. Okay. Goal map. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain Climb on the car? Doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... Come on, get on the he car. Would prove it. Damn it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. Mm -hmm. So he closed his eyes gently and he invited himself to wake up. Mm -hmm. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. He's Let still walking. Up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to I be don't, over. I, I've lost track of where Let I am. Let me go back to my job. 
Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please. It's all I want. Ooh, I saw something in the I corner want my there. apartment and my wife and my job. <laughs> I don't I have want a wife. Is my life exactly the way it's always been. Hmm. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything, Everything will, be, will fine. be fine. I am okay. Here I am. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone <laughs> wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Well, this is, this the, is story the story of a, of a woman, woman named Mariella. Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked I hope to that was place creepy work. Point. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. Mm. I am sane. I am in <laughs> control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. Mm -hmm. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important she never called the ambulance. impressions of her would affect her career. And by extension, the rest of her life. She Never no called the end. So it. it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Yep. Fucking Mariella. Never called the ambulance. The end is never the end. Okay. Uh, I am going to be right back. All right, I am back. Sorry about that. Let's go for another ending. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Oh, please. Are yes. you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. Mm -hmm. A measly five clicks. Yep. Now, suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true mm -hmm. effort for a noble cause. Mm -hmm. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly 50 clicks. No, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. I, 
I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be a, okay. a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? 417. Oh, great. Now, go click a few times on door 437. 437. Excellent. I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. Four, one, five. Now, back to door number four, three, seven. Let's see. How about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine. All right, back to room four, one, seven. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Okay. Okay, now go climb on employee 419's desk. Yes, this is great. You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door 416. 416? We've almost got it. Now the copy machine. Do that one again. Yes. Finish it off, Stanley! Five clicks on door- Yes! We did it! <laughs> oh, wow. That felt amazing. Oh, you really earned it, Stanley. Nothing could hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. Just think, only a few minutes ago, you believed an achievement was worth five little clicks. Really, now? What were you thinking? What is this? Surname access. I can't read the rest. I wish I could up the resolution of these textures. Input received. All right, let's go forward, onward, upward, when Stanley came to and a set other of two directions. Doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Mm hmm. Oh, there's a bathroom now. Because the boss knows that the boss that what the boss says goes. If the bosses suffered losses. And that's what the boss chose. Extreme bathrooms and time time. No reflection, of course. Interesting. I'm going to screenshot that, though. I don't think... I don't remember being able to go into the executive bathroom uh, in the last one. Oh, damn it. Ooh! Hello? What's this way? <laughs> Business strategy. Shoot the panda. Let's go down. This is new, I think. Are we there? What? What?
Is this not a real elevator? I just click this. That's so fucking dumb. Hmm. What is that? I am the most expensive boss. God damn it. Okay. Waste of time. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley Let's wondered in disbelief right. who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known Damn. was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the Certificate boss had of pompous an extra secret pin number. Two... Eight, Two, eight, four, four, I was five. way off. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's go down. Let's go down. Apparently, descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized mm -hmm. he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to oh. think for himself, to oh. question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question okay. would not go unanswered for long. Wait, I can go back up? Whoops, nope. Uh, never mind. Stanley actually got back <laughs> into the elevator and went back up. Silly me. Why did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. <laughs> I'm going back up. This is definitely new. I think. Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. It's that keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive rapid fire the code of already. critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Wow. <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. I'm on the couch. Can I get onto the desk? No. Hang on. Damn. What was the code? Let's just keep riding the elevator, I guess. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator <laughs> and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up <laughs> with all this? Surely this time Stanley will walk forward into the spooky corridor, won't he? Did you think we were going to go forward down the spooky corridor? No. It's time once again to go back up in the elevator. I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? The suspense is killing me. 
Yep. Uh huh. <laughs> oh my god. It's the boss's office. <sighs> this absolutely changes everything for me. Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. Sounds good. Oh, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to embrace this stunning revelation and to move forward with no, no wait, no. I need more time oh to my process. fully come to terms with it. I have made space in my worldview for this astonishing <laughs> new reality. As before, I turn to your expert eye for gripping narrative, Master Stanley. Of course, going back down in the elevator. How did I not anticipate it? I mean, sure, now it's obvious, but you have to understand that 30 seconds ago, this kind of thing had never been attempted before. <laughs> I had no frame of reference to even anticipate it. That's just how revelatory Stanley's decision-making is. I just like writing it. In a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive. Mm-hmm. 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 But what if... <laughs> But what if we do it again? No comment? Oh. Hmm. You know what? <laughs> I just thought of something. Hold on, let's stop Ooh. for a minute. Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. You and I, we have no way of knowing what will be at the top of this elevator. But the <laughs> suspense, the agony of waiting and anticipating and having to guess, that's the real thrill. Oh, I simply don't want to let that feeling go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice and slow? Oh my God. There we go. Isn't this so much oh more exciting, God. you know, Stanley? It seems like nowadays the only thing that audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. They want big, explosive moments flung right in their faces from the very moment that things get started. But where's the tension? Where's the trust in the audience to build a slow and nuanced appreciation for the story? The characters? Why aren't we given time to imagine the surprises? To have to think and to anticipate and then to marvel at the eventual reveal. This is storytelling, Stanley. What mm -hmm. you and I are mm -hmm. doing right now. This is the most exciting narrative to be developed in years. And it's mm -hmm. really all because of you. You're mm -hmm. the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact same locations <laughs> over and over. Truly, I mean it. This is unique and different. It's not like anything else out there. You see, I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged and not pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time, and we all know it, which is why we're so starved for content that makes us feel sharp and vital and alive. Mm. That's why people like you so much, Stanley. Because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. You're a rule model. God you damn know. it, how tall is People tall. look up to you. Is that the Which exit? Which is why, though I didn't know when to spring this on you, but, well, I've gathered a little press conference oh? for you. So that you can talk about your work and your storytelling and your life. Yes, I know you're not much for the public eye, but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. They really look up to you, Stanley. I don't know if you realize the impact you have on them. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact on them for the better. 
Oh good, we're here. Okay, the room where we're holding the press conference should Damn. be just around the corner here somewhere. All eyes on Stanley live on stage. World's healthiest human being, all tricks revealed. How we did it, the pyramids, live, the guy who went to Mars. Okay. <laughs> An evening with world peace, baby. Ah, yes, here it is. That Just was a Minecraft sound. Door. Minecraft door sound. World's first sentient machine. Stage door. The Stanley Parables. Stanley live uh, tonight live on stage. The man, the process, the myth, the legend, the parable. Stanley from the Stanley Parable tonight live on stage. What's up with the Minecraft door sound? Doing great. A conversation with Alexander the Great. Do right. stage. Are you ready? I've told them you're going to speak a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling and what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't worry. You'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Okay. It looks like they're ready for you. Go get them. Indoors Monthly. National Geographic. The Storyteller. Stanley reveals all in the new book. Up again, down again, the Stanley story. Hell yes. Congratulations, Stanley. Remember where you came from, came from your co-workers. An unforgiving account of ups as well as downs. Highs and lows, isn't that what life's about? We wrote a book, apparently. The dude who came up with pizza. <laughs> the Lord. Meet and greet. Well, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back down the stairs. And then I'm going to go up the stairs. All right, I'll go forward. Whoa. I walked back. I walked back. What? 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 All of his co-workers were Was gone. that the end? What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace Hang of his Hang on, I want to go back to that ending. Because I didn't ever reach the podium. I turned around. Oh. Oh. New content? What does that mean, new content? Let's... I'm gonna go back there. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors... Oh god, we're gonna have to ride all the left. elevators again. But I wanna get to that podium, just in case. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a way it's almost certainly Stanley decided a dead to go end. up to his boss's coming to a staircase. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I don't trust that elevator. Stepping into his manager's office, 
Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad yeah. behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? I don't remember. In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Uh-huh. 28845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly mm -hmm. opened passageway. Was this ending in the first game? Because I, I don't think I got this ending before. Whoops. Nope. Uh, never mind. Um, Stanley actually I'll be right back. got back into the elevator and went back up. Silly me. Why did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. And I am back. Hey, Poppy. Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. Yep. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. It's that keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Wow. <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. Okay. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? Surely this time Stanley will walk forward into the spooky corridor, won't he? Did you think we were going to go forward no. down the spooky corridor? No. Can I get this it's time one more time again to go back up in the elevator. I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? The suspense is killing me. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. It's the boss's office. <sighs> this absolutely changes everything for me. Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. Just gonna check my phone. Okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to embrace this stunning revelation and to move forward with... No! I doubt it. No, wait! No! I need more time to process. Okay. All 
all right. I have fully come to terms with it. I have made space, of course. Going back down in the elevator. How did I not anticipate it? I mean, sure, now it's obvious, but you have mm -hmm, to understand mm -hmm. that 30 seconds ago, this kind of thing had never been attempted before. I had no frame of reference to even anticipate it. That's just how revelatory Stanley's decision-making is. A breath of fresh air in a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive. Mm-hmm. Once more. Hmm. You know what? I've just thought of something. Hold on, let's stop for a moment. Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. You and I, we have no way of knowing what will be at the top of this elevator. But the suspense, the agony of waiting and anticipating and having to guess, that's the real thrill. Hell yeah, oh, it is. You don't want to let that feeling go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice and slow? There we Sounds go. Sounds good to me. Isn't this so much more exciting? You know, Stanley, it seems like nowadays the only thing that audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. They want big, explosive moments flung right in their faces from the very moment that things get started. But where's the tension? Where's the trust in the audience I don't to build see a the slow and yet. nuanced appreciation for the story, the characters? Why aren't we given time to imagine the surprises, to have to think and to anticipate, and then to marvel at the eventual reveal? This mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is storytelling, Stanley. What you and I are doing right now. This is the most exciting narrative to be developed in years. After this, we'll be going through and it's really all the because new of you. content story. You're the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact same locations over and over. Truly, I mean it. This is unique and different. It's not like anything else out there. You see, I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged and not the exit. pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time, and we all know it. Which is why we're so starved for content that makes us feel sharp and vital and alive. That's why people like you so much, Stanley. Because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. There's the exit. You're a rule model, you know? People look up to you. Which is why... Oh, I didn't know when to spring this on you, but, well, I've gathered a little press conference for you. <laughs> so that you can talk about your work and your storytelling and your life. Yes, Sounds I know good to you're me. not much for the public eye, but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. They really look up to you, Stanley. I don't know if you realize the impact you have on them. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact on them for the better. Oh, good, we're here. Okay, I can't go back down. Okay, the room where we're holding the press conference should be just around the corner here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, here it is, just through this door. All right, are you ready? I've told them you're going to speak a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling mm -hmm, and what it mm -hmm. means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't worry, you'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Okay, it looks like they're ready for you. Go get them. I want to see what's on that podium. Nothing. Not, I mean, there is something there, but I can't see it. Okay. So it was the same ending, it's just a timing thing. That's a shame. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Let's go ahead and go Stanley to the new, to check out the, the new content. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? I'm gonna go that way. What? Oh. 
It's an amusement park ride? Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. Mm -hmm. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was <laughs> expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. Yeah. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, <laughs> delighting audiences the world over. Okay. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. All right, all right, let's go. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Um, is it broken? What's oh going on God. here? Should we, should we be moving oh somewhere? Oh my God. Oh, there we go. All right, finally, oh, okay. at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been I'm getting a sinking let's feeling. But there is no new content. There is no new content. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if them. Um... Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. The jump circle. All right. All right. Let's see. It's. The jump circle? Can I just move is, past? Is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? I can jump. But only in this circle. Another elevator. Goodness, another elevator. Stanley, That's what I said. I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours <laughs> of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The <laughs> Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. <laughs> <sighs> it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? Oh, okay. We're resetting. I thought I was going to have to reset. Oh! Hello? 
This is new. We've got a picture of uh, the main office. Psst. Stanley, come over here. In the vent. I want to show you something. Yeah, okay, sure. Coffee nut. This seems good to me. Are we going to go through some unused assets? Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past, and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special, and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just what the our fuck? little secret. Take a look. I call it the Memory Zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences okay. like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. Don't forget the Stanley Parable. Zone, sweet zone. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap re-release? the exit. Remember back in October of the main 2013 uh, of when the, the game originally ending. launched? Back then, Collective video games edition. had integrity. Back then, it all Independent meant games something. Festival. Oh, the waste. <laughs> the British Academy of Film and Television Arts awarded to Stanley Parable, The Last of Us. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Stanley Parable. You deserved it over The Last of Us. The original remake. Good times. Smile because it happened. Oh, there's more. The first dollar that they earned. Unachievable. I do have that achievement. I do have that achievement. Um, I'm about three years into this achievement. And in order to get the uh, super don't go uh, super go outside achievement, I need to wait another seven. Uh, yeah, another seven years. Jesus Christ. I'm going to go for both at once, hopefully. Nominee for game innovation. Nominee for debut game. Nominee for story. Video game releasing today. Rutgers uh, goes from scandal to new crisis. College, colleges show uneven effort to enroll the poor. Costs hinder new uh, attack to achieve diversity. Business leaders pushing election of council allies. 50% off designer hat. But a small creature owns the other half. I don't know what that's in reference to. Late edition. Uh, today, sunny, hot, humid, high 92. Tonight, clear to partly louder. One, yeah. All right. All the news that's fit to print. Cool. Los Angeles Times. Stanley Bar Parable deals tough choices. And there's the insanity ending. In loving memory of little Stanley... I wonder if that's someone's actual pet. I can't sit down on the bench. What is that over there? Is that sweet on la memorizo says la prise? And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. 
Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James <laughs> Stephanie Sterling writes, and Oh, I no. <laughs> Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim. It was Persona 3. It was all of them. And now, <laughs> it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. An hour? That sounds like a lot. The tasteful nostalgic, it was good. We got the adventure line, the Minecraft uh, area. Let's begin again. Um, this is nice. The portal area. We can go up or down. Let's go down. Oh. Okay, that door closed. What's this? Memory zone maintenance. Okay. Anything important down here? Knowing your city. I wish I could read that. Person of the year. Got some game file shit. Is this going to close behind me? Yeah, okay. Alright, we got to come back here then. The greatest wealth is memory. Uh, we should have... <sighs> we should have tried the other door first. Because if it doesn't open, then I'll have wasted more time. Is that from the Stanley Parable Deluxe Edition? Or is that from the Stanley Parable um, um, demo? Sorry, I couldn't Here's think of the word. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. Well, it didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone. To spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. <sighs> These were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go the back serious to have it all over again. The serious room. I want to go into the serious room. How the fuck do I get in there? Hang on. I still can't jump. The Serious Room 2013. Damn it. Maybe I can get there eventually. Okay, now the store is open. Wait. Hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Oh, God. Oh no! Oh god no! Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online <laughs> video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's being collecting down here. Mm -hmm. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Recommended. Blurred out. Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator oh, is no. obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not trying to be yeah, funny. Oh. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. Okay. Oh 
damn it. I want to get up. The, I want to get over there. Ah. This is a lot of reviews. How many reviews does it wait? <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to check how many reviews does this game have on Steam? Is there a easy way to check that? Oh wait, no, I want the original uh, Stanley Parable store page. Positive reviews. Oh, oh, um, wait, hang on. How many reviews are there? All reviews, 36,644. Okay. Cool. We got another one that's blurred out, but positive. Here we go. Okay, let's see what this one says. It comes very well, the idea for the game is good. On the no, 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 no. For someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley, <laughs> I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't hmm. know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... No, <laughs> I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel mm -hmm. like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable well, you did. isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. What's this one got to say? You constantly have to stop doing anything <laughs> so the narrator can catch up with his long winded explanations of what's oh, happening. Oh no! I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment surely it couldn't hurt. Okay. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive what? reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer standard. Yes, a skip button we shall have. Okay. <laughs> okay. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you, with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very I'm proud not gonna to skip anything. Delivered. No more listening to me rambling on and on and on. No, 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 no. The Stanley Parable is a game for the people. Mm -hmm. And if the people want silence, then by goodness, that's what they're going to get. Well, don't sit around waiting for me to shut up. Go ahead and make me shut up. Here, we'll pretend that I've just begun an interminable monologue, and it goes something like this. The story and the choices are what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time, everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 I'm not gonna skip. We've eaten too much, and it can't be just yet, no, no, until 245, that the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction, therefore, becomes impossible to manufacture. It went on for nearly 10,000 no. years, until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say... Will this go on forever until I skip? The story and the... 
All right, I'm skipping. Oh. oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, <laughs> rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Uh -huh. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps... <laughs> <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go poof, and it's all over. Oh, I can't wait to see what Cookie 9 will say about this, and whether they'll edit the rating of their Steam review, or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. To be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I guess I should become better educated on exactly how Steam works. Perhaps that would have been the smart thing to check on before I went about this whole exercise of making the skip button. Although I have to imagine that after seeing this exciting new technology at work, surely whoever it is runs Steam will instantly run out and implement a new feature to make it possible to edit one. Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, it's God, the door is gone. Durable by any means, but it's, well, there's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. I think the skip button has been aptly... <laughs> Stanley! Stanley! St Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 hours! You've just been frozen there! I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer, and my god, there's no way out of the room. <laughs> Stanley, the door yeah, is I know, gone. I know it's it. completely gone. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times, and there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you and the button. Okay, and the if you clock keep pressing changed. it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here. Oh, and more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again. I can't control anything in this room, Stanley. Oh, Stanley, you're back. You're back. The tree oh is goodness. dead. The plant. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I I think it's been a week. Or two weeks. I've been sitting here all that time. Just sitting here. Not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? Yeah. But it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because I know you can't hear me once you push that button. Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. Mm -hmm. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever a sat year. down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days, months. I lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. And when that feeling had begun to subside, what took its place is what I can only describe as the collapse of every moment I have ever experienced my entire life. Mm -hmm. All of them collapsed down into a single instant. In that instant, I could see myself clearly, calmly, with a collected heart. It was an impossibly rich wellspring. He's gone. He's done talking. Jesus Christ. What have I done? The fire alarm needs replacing. But 
that they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and make all of their... Okay. This is genuinely unsettling. The end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end. As I was saying, is never the end 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 is never the end. Thought I heard movement. There's water dripping now. The roof is leaking. How many years have we been gone? Jesus Christ. This is really dark. This is like the suicide end. Dark. We're straight up torturing the narrator. I'm just looking for a way out. How long has it been? Decades? Centuries? Weird. The plants died again? It looks like a rock fell back into place there. I don't like this. Oh god, a way out. Is this the end of time? What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Gonna follow some rocks. Into the desert. I should probably use the sun as a compass, actually. I'm gonna head this way until I'm in line with the building again. Oh, okay, we're done. That was dark. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was really fucking dark. New, new content. Oh, good. You noticed my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. Okay. Okay. Is he gonna show us what he spent his eternity doing? Cause, like, I feel like making him live through an eternity might make him a little upset. Oh, okay, we skipped the... We skipped that. Okay. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about okay. how roundly disappointing this ultra-deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. Yeah. So forget this ultra-deluxe nonsense. I say we take it oh. one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. Okay. 
end. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience, built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go uh -huh. in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Okay. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra I don't Deluxe. like this. What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long term franchising potential. Uh huh. Okay. I'm still a little unnerved, I'll be honest. New content part two is in. Okay. Boring sections of the chart. Cool red section of the chart. They're back, two doors. Can't really read that. One plus one is two minus one. Okay. Every pause button is a Roman numeral two. Yeah. More the Stanley Parable. Better the Stanley Parable. Sequential mind share, paradigm shift, synergy, brick and mortar approach, envelop client centric marketing, the color red, leverage. Holistic value. We got uh, some different slides, logo ideas. Okay. Nice. Is that the fern? That's the goddamn fern. I spent a long time looking at that first. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly <laughs> the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take Double a look Stanley. at some of the features I've been developing for it. Mm -hmm. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything <laughs> scientific or logical, really. Uh huh, sure. Four two seven. Portal two, Half Life two, Batman Ark Arkham Asylum two, Divinity Original Sin two, Doom two, Aladdin two, Return of Jafar, Dark Souls two. I heard mediocre things about Dark Souls two. The prequel to the Stanley Parable two is the sequel to the Stanley Parable. Is the pre okay? Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm okay. We got a new content bus. New features. Expo Hall Two. Of course. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Okay. Sure. Okay. I don't like this. The button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. Hear your name in the game. Enjoy new features. There's a staircase back there. We'll go to that later, I guess. Okay. For the Stanley Parable 2, uh -huh. I asked myself. What do players really want? And of huh. course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually too big, recognized too small, just and right. validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only <laughs> says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Uh -huh. Here, let's have you roleplay as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. 
Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Uh -huh. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. Sure. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim, sleeping and waking as Jim, falling... Jim. Whoa, 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 hold on. I wasn't finished setting up the <laughs> backstory. If you don't properly roleplay as Jim, then you'll never understand the impact of this button. Otherwise, it's just a stupid button that says somebody else's name. Okay, we're doing it again, and this time let me finish first. <clears throat> now, allow yourself to become Jim. Imagine... Jim. All right, fine, whatever. <laughs> it's just a meaningless button that says Jim. Are you happy now? Get out of here. I'm done with this button. Why don't you go humiliate me in front yeah. of a different feature that I worked very hard on? Yeah, I'm sure you did. I'm sure you worked very hard on the Jim button. Maybe I'll only let people named Jim play the Stanley Parable too. <laughs> they would appreciate what I've created here. A whole new office. Red is the new orange. A new updated ray traced. More of the same, but in a good way. Sequel to the new features, new content, new ideas. I'm screenshotting. Consistent quality with just the right amount of change. The baby is all grown up. <laughs> Oh my god. Please, no screenshots. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, yeah, anyways. Okay. Um, the button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. Jump circle, infinite hole. Let's check this area out first. The Stanley Parable 2, please no screenshots. I, Okay, we got the Star Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket, Office Decorations, Infinite Hole, we got a merch thing over here, and then that doorway back there. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing particularly great. Let's go to the Reassurance Bucket. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical, that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, mm -hmm. I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. Okay. You see, Stanley, any time you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. Okay. It's true. As long as you hold onto the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring sure. cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And All to right. be honest... It's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. Oh, we can try the bucket? Can we hold things? <laughs> can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. <laughs> and in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as uh -huh. a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. Mm -hmm. Am I going to have this bucket forever now? Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. Okay. Oh god, there's this is a big area. Epilogue. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Okay, good. Yes, yes, it will go at the end of the... Um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're up here. 
That's new. It is new, isn't it? We've got an infinite hole, collectibles, free new e easy achievement. All right, we got uh, setting world cha settings world champion, infinite hole, and free achievement. Let's go to the settings world champion first. Oh. Is there a world champions uh, a world champion setting? Okay, well, I guess we'll come back to that. The jump circle. You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's sure. Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece then. Yeah, nothing like a circle made of tape. Okay. Expo Hall 2 Guide. Alright, we got uh, N is the jump circle. Yep, alright, I, I can read maps pretty well. Uh, 5 is this map. Q is free achievement. That's just over there. Uh, the button that says the name of the player that is playing the game is B. We already went in there. Z is merch. Number is World Settings uh, Champion. Uh, B squared, Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket, which I have already collected. Nice reflect, nice uh, reflections on the uh, bucket, by the way. That's some good texturing. Um, uh, three is Office Decorations, which should be uh, just that way, I guess. Right? Is that... No, no, no. Uh, three is going to be over there and then to the right. Yeah. Uh, uh, semicolon is epilogue. We already saw that. A9 is collectibles. That's just up there. K is infinite hole. And E is exit. E, okay, so that's the exit over there then. Uh, let's go. Let's look for office decorations then. I'm gonna save the new achievement for towards the end. Okay, I'll be honest. I haven't yet decided on this one. I uh -huh. think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on get well someday and <laughs> happy twelfth birthday. These. Which would you go with? You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Get well someday, it is. Oh, fine. I like that all the pictures changed. Or actually, maybe I should have gone with. No, no, I've made my decision. We're moving on. Come now, you've already made your choice. It's true that you chose badly, but we <laughs> all have to move on from our mistakes. Okay, I want to trigger more dialogue. Where is this? Okay. Was this door always open? I think it was, yeah. We just didn't go into it. Damn, am I gonna... Am I gonna... The question is, am I going to come back to this ending? So that I can... Click the other button. <laughs> is this the infinite hole? Time, depth... Hole like infinity, space like infinity. Uh, okay. 
Opening, rim, surrounding area, depth, infinite. Hole, entrance, infinity. I feel like I shouldn't go in there quite yet. Infinite hole chart. Hole, depth, space, question mark, science, more, infinity, more hole, falling, educational use only. It just keeps going. Alright, uh, I'm gonna wait on that one. Because I don't want to jump into an infinite hole quite yet. So let's go ahead and go to the collectibles. Collect them all. Can you find them? Can you find them? Can you find them? Ah, collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around mm -hmm. gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. Mm -hmm. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic <laughs> joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. <laughs> okay. Can I go back in? No, I can't. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Right, exit is that way. Let's go for the achievement next. It just works. Uh, where have I heard that before? Pull the lever, receive your new achievement. No more steps, it just works. Get yours right now. Sounds good to me. Now here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you all come to this lever, and when you pull it, the mm -hmm. achievement will be given to you. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. I'm mm -hmm. not a wizard, Stanley, but mm -hmm. I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, <laughs> and I promise it will happen. Okay. How many times do I have to click this old man? Let's try walking out and walking back in. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let's try the infinite hole next. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. Oh, okay, this is, in there. fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right, infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. Wow. Truly innovative. 
I've never seen an infinite hole before. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top and we can continue onward. Nah. Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. This is okay, just another Stanley, closet. I don't know me. quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Is there fall damage? It's a very, very deep hole. To be certain, it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. Uh -oh. From one perspective, the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a. Okay, well, good for you. You found the <laughs> bottom of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. New mug. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. Look, I think the issue yeah, here is just PM. that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on <laughs> me. Maybe you're the problem. <sighs> Look, uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the hole mostly infinite? If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. Okay. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for heaven. <laughs> you see, I was right. The problem is you. Uh huh. The problem is that you like holes too much. Not normal. Phrasing. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there. Goes on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of. Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter it to you did. this time? I couldn't help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I did I notice mean, that. Admittedly, I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. I really do have so much more to show you and to talk about, and I've had enough of the hole for a lifetime. Gosh, how could I have guessed? You're back in the hole. If this starts to become a thing with... Wow. Okay. Yes. I'm starting to become extremely certain <laughs> that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. <laughs> I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's what? going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Let's pop back up to the top, and we'll see if it gets any shorter. Well, there it is. The shame of my life <laughs> has come to haunt me. Not only is the hole not infinite, but it's barely <laughs> even a hole at this point. It's more of a concavity, or even a very aggressive divot. <laughs> How is this still appealing to you? <laughs> I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth, I just can't see you scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. Hmm. Uh -oh. <laughs> is the um, teleport button not working? You sure? Well, I mean, I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. Still nothing? Well, I suppose... Uh, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. 
Goodbye, Stanley. <laughs> I couldn't bear to be away from home. <laughs> and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. It's a win for everyone. No. You get to be with the whole. I get to do literally <laughs> anything else. No. Take care, Stanley. I hope you and the whole have a wonderful rest of eternity together. Shit. What's up with the ominous noise? Oh! Oh, it's getting deeper again. Let's see where this goes. Okay. Oh, F, change your perspective. Oh. This is new. I have the bucket. <laughs> nice light rays. G, change your perception. Have we reached the bottom? Nope. Puppies. This is this is amazing. <laughs> It'd be great if it could access my desktop uh, photo. Back at the beginning? Okay. I'll get to change yourself in a second. I want to just take it all in. Okay, I think we're looping. really cursed. Now you're no, no. 
error. Stanley, you're no Stanley. <laughs> Stanley. Huh? Oh, good, you're awake. It seems you had sort of dozed off there, <laughs> drifting away into dreamland. But we can't have that, Stanley, because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. Oh. You don't want to miss a single moment. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole. <laughs> I'm looking forward to all of them. Excuse me. Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle pip. All right. Sorry about that. I had to blow my nose. Oh, what? No, don't tell me that's the end. I didn't get to exit the place. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Uh, let's try that one settings thing again. Settings champion. You heard Jim in the game. Hey, I didn't realize it, it uh, it said that now. I might try going into the infinite hole again. <laughs> One handed walking off. Oh god, all right, inverted. What is one-handed walking? Let's turn off invert Y. I can't use arrow keys for anything. What is one hand? Okay, I'll figure that out in a second. Uh, let's go back to the infinite hole. Oh. I don't want to leave yet. That's another staircase there. Um, oh, I also don't want to get too spoiled. Settings world champion. What the hell? is one-handed walking. Let's try this achievement again. Do I have to, to attach the bucket somewhere? Pull me 
pull me, pull me, pull me. Please. Alright. Um. I can always come back here, probably. I'm not going to look up anything yet. I'm just going to leave. Um, if I can't figure it out on my own, then I will look up some answers, see, if, see what I can get. All right. Have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? Mm hmm No screenshots. So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. Mm -hmm. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into Screen a chat. meaningful gameplay experience. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Watch it be like a clicker game. Oh. Oh my god. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on. Let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes. Yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version 2. This is worse. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. The gym I button. more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I'm I sure you did. To love it. No matter you how turn on the these light. gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, <laughs> insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course, uh -huh. with respect, with care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Yeah. Would it possibly work? I suppose it could, but it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. The Stanley Parable 2. Okay. Settings. What is... Oh, hold left and right mouse buttons to walk? Oh. Okay. If only I had read the uh, description. Still looking for the settings king thing, set settings champion, whatever. Let's try this again. Once more unto the breach. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Yeah. Stanley worked for a company in a the big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427, and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, mm -hmm. telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in. Though he had been made exactly for this job, mm -hmm. Stanley was happy. 
And then one day, something very peculiar happened. <laughs> something that would forever change Stanley. Okay. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very sure. clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. <laughs> so this is the Stanley Parable 2, huh? At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map, until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. Mm -hmm. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Indeed. Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Ah, then in that case, we'll continue. <laughs> but now, here comes the real question. What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Mm -hmm. Do you think it would have been particularly different? No. Would I have taken the same idea but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now, think about it. Would it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other option? Clearly, this whole gag takes some time. <laughs> what if the other option is even longer? How long will you spend in total just to have heard all the narration? Oh, and this is rich. Perhaps you've just played the other option, and now you've come to see what happens in this one. So, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be <laughs> not knowing what happens when you pick the other option. Indeed, you are one of the lucky ones. Though if the other option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. <laughs> well now, I've built up the other option so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. Begin the game again. How Once more. Stanley was alone. Finally. Oh. This is great, he thought to himself. This is what I've wanted all along. I got what uh -huh. I wanted. Is that just a random... No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Yes. Well, I don't know how to say this politely, but you could literally just hit escape and restart the game any <laughs> old time you want. Like, right now. You could have done it just then. Now would also be an appropriate time to quit. Any of these points and so many, many more, all of them are appropriate. I'm enjoying what seems to be an internal <laughs> conflict going on where you are literally unable to act on your own desires <laughs> to restart the game. So, just to push the envelope... I'm going to try and make this as miserable as possible and see how long you can maintain. 
<laughs> there once was a man named Stanley, who people considered so manly. But the truth must be told, he was not very old and was quite particularly gangly. What Stanley liked most was buttons. He pushed them like some kind of glutton. He did it all day in a meaningful way. Mm -hmm. But his brain had long ceased <laughs> to function. Okay. Which is why he is in this parable and lives an existence quite terrible. And if you are not strong and keep playing along, you too will become quite unbearable. Yes. You too will become quite unbearable. Mm -hmm. Oh no, does this go on forever? I give up. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Ooh, we're going left this Stanley time. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he left? simply missed a memo. Oh! The bucket! Stanley picked up the bucket. Two inputs. Okay. Four sixteen is closed again. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest <laughs> and entered the door on his left. Yeah, sure. Still, no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than <laughs> ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Oh, Stanley, can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. Oh. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy. <laughs> it's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must be. Given the I'm trying the to give in. It is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. <laughs> you can't hand it over. Oh, no. We're getting into name calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait. Now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends, that your relationship is purely superficial and convenient, that your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship <laughs> towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Well, I never. Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. Okay, I've got you something which I think will help settle this oh, debate okay. once and for all. Here we go. There. Hey. Now it's settled. No more debate. No more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. <laughs> All 
right. I've got a second sticker back here, and I'm going to slap it on as well because I think it's appropriate. You see? <laughs> I feel that it works because the sticker is also a bucket. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a bucket or not, you can look down at this sticker and say to yourself, Oh, it's a bucket. <laughs> there really is a wide variety of applications for this sticker. Uh -huh. You know what? I could take the name calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket, but now the broom closet is just giving us the silent treatment. And to be honest, I'm sick of the pettiness on display. You can stay here all you like, but I've had it with this impetulant room of cleaning supplies. Easily the most childish such room I've ever been in. Okay. I'll see you outside, and we can get on with the story about you and your bucket. I hope I get to keep the stickers. Oh. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Wait, wait, I want the insanity ending with the bucket. Oh shit, there's actually a collectible here. One of them, one of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, <laughs> no reward for collecting all of these, only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You okay. can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. Okay. I have the bucket, so the dialogue should be different. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then, something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his eyes. Uh, yes. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. <laughs> the bucket returned his gaze, but said nothing at all. That's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. He held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized, this isn't my bucket. It's just a normal, everyday bucket. Someone else's bucket, perhaps. How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This is all- It has my wrong. name on it. Surely no good oh, will God. come from this. Who knows what sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. And indeed, now he noticed that the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Oh, gracious. He exclaimed, without my bucket, I've gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find it. Far off in the distance now, he heard it calling to him. Stanley, Stanley, it's me, the bucket. Could it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the next. None of them were his. None of them were oh, his no. special bucket. Come to me, Stanley. Find me. He had to find the bucket. He had to return to his old friend. <laughs> it was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, it froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. It was incredibly painful. Stanley doubled over in agony and blacked out. What the hell? Hi, Raven Bloody King. How's it this going? This is the story of a woman named Mariella. <laughs> Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, picked up her bucket of comfort and security, and walked to her place. <laughs> of but on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming uh -huh. to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. <laughs> this man had no bucket. <laughs> of course he'd gone mad, ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's of all course. just a video game. It could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him. Perhaps he didn't even realize <laughs> he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place. 
How cruel the world can be, Mary Ella thought. And she hugged her own bucket even tighter. <laughs> but of course, she had no time for this. There were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work, for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. And mm -hmm. yes, she thought to herself, my life is ass. <laughs> and she backflipped all the way to work. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Okay. So we got the bucket insanity ending. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a mem- Stanley lifted the bucket into hey, his Hey, it arms. keeps the stickers. A wave of comfort rushed over him. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Mm-hmm. That's the plan. Trust the co oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh! Okay. Mission status. Inside of a sequel exhibit. A large room with lots of boxes. Stairs. Something to do with stairs. Somewhere both red and blue. Nearby a fireplace. Okay. A private but smelly place for an important person. Okay. Cool. Is this some kind of game? There must be a points to this. Looks <laughs> lol looks like four two seven. Five. There be just take it from me. Gotta collect them all. Okay. <laughs> we have uh <laughs> okay. Who took these pictures of them? All right, wow. The entire office has changed. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Money in the morning, money in the evening, money for breakfast, money crisp. Another miniature Stanley figurine. Uh huh. Some, you know. There really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs? Or um, what about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another Stanlerine under oh, your Oh, good. Bed. Okay. Good, good, good. Input received. Three. Cool. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. <laughs> was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Near a fireplace. That was a fireplace, I think. Hello. Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figlies. Yeah. And now I'm torn between Stanlerines and figlies. What do you I think, prefer figlies. What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. Okay. Am I gonna bring- I'll, I'll bring the, uh, bucket to the press conference later. Since I've already done that ending twice now. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. 
It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be <sighs> right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. I haven't actually gone this way uh, yet today. Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket <laughs> both wondered to themselves. Sure. And Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, <laughs> and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. One oh four and two thirty four. Okay, so two thirty four has some something on it. Was I may the investigate bucket that under later. the mind control facility's <laughs> influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kind bucket is of main character. does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raise two thirty four in Stanley's view. Two thirty four. No! He screamed into the What bucket. does that say? He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone oh, else's control. Oh, it's just—it's a missing though thing. He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one <laughs> except for the bucket. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the Bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way. What does that say? And the Bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. Hmm. Let's go for the standard ending for this, uh, for this one. Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Mm -hmm. Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley <laughs> wanted to sneeze in every country of the world. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was okay. one they'd live together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and... What? Wait, what was what? happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in Ooh. uncertainty. This is Until new. finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. No! Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket, and go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place. Not, not while without he has the such bucket. A precious bucket in his arms. Not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. 
but at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought okay. to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. <laughs> Is it just me? Or did the game get, like, significantly more unsettling? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Oh, did it go up already? I think it did go up already. Figurine Finders Committee meeting today in the meeting room. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any. The confusion and the chaos all seemed to melt away as Stanley embraced the bucket. Okay. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Um, what haven't we done? Did we do everything on the left? Let's go right for now. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left, to go back to the meeting room. Is this the room with and the boxes? So the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. There's the meeting room. Let's go down this time. I forget what's down here. Oh, good Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. Oh yeah, we still need to do the escape place eventually. Oh. The broom closet! You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket <laughs> you're carrying around everywhere. <laughs> the bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game. Like, like the, the fur. Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Because that's what fans line, want the for a sequel. Closet. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before yes i know i'm the one who gave you the bucket but you're spending too much time with it don't you want another story involving the adventure line we yes. can make the adventure line go somewhere new yes yes that's Ooh. what the fans want let's do it wait place with a fireplace this is a fireplace where is the collectible Is it... Is it further? Whee! Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. More assets. Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. I refuse. Ah, uh, this is a tall ass stair staircase, stairway, stairwell. Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. That's no. why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. No. 
I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the Bucket. No. And then pop it into the machine when you're ready. No. I refuse. Now what? listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the Bucket. I don't know what the Bucket Destroyer will do if it can't destroy your Bucket. Destroying Buckets is <laughs> all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you'd see that its desire <laughs> to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and... <laughs> Am I dead? Is this bucket destroyer my prized creation <laughs> you had so much potential we were going to do such marvelous things with you tell such spell binding stories about you all of it squandered now goodbye new friend for the moment in time that you were here oh i got to play through this part you again were magnificent Fade to black. All right, let's do that one again. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? I already... Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Warmth spread through Stanley's arms. With the bucket in his arms again, he was home. Yes. All right. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the... This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him we're going that the employee back lounge was simply the place this way again. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? We're going to wait for a few seconds. Meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. Truly, being here with the bucket <laughs> was a grand adventure. Stanley reflected on all they know. Never mind, the bucket was wrong. Mm -hmm. Stanley took the door on his left to go back, and so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite nope. door. Nope. I hope I didn't miss my chance to destroy the bucket. Oh, good, Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket you're carrying around everywhere. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. 
Don't you want another story involving the adventure line? I do. We can make the adventure line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's what the fans want. Let's do it. All right, let's do it again. Whee! Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yes. It's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get all right. the bucket. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. Oh wait, can I literally not give it the bucket? Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the bucket. I don't know what the bucket destroyer will do if it can't destroy you. Oh, come on. Destroying buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one person... I'm literally trying. ...to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you would see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now. Come on. The fans are Do it the damn fans, it. Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and... God damn it. I tried my best. I tried, okay? I pressed all the buttons. Bucket Destroyer, my prized creation. You had so much potential. We were going to do such marvelous things with you, tell such spell-binding stories about you. All yeah, of I've seen now. this. Goodbye, okay. new friend. For the moment in time that you were here, you were magnificent. Truly. It's a pity you couldn't do your job, though. Fade to black once more. Okay, so that's that ending while holding the bucket. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley picked up the bucket and smiled. He'd never be alone again. Not truly alone. Mm -hmm. Not with the bucket around. All right, let's go through Stanley the mind control the escape route. Chest and entered the door on his left. A large room, lots of boxes, and somewhere both red and blue. Okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Oh, I have two endings to pursue here, actually. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Oh wait, this was the fireplace. This is certainly the most logical explanation. Okay. Yeah.
Um, okay, so I'm thinking before we do the mind control ending, let's do this ending again. Um, Wait, Stanley said to the bucket. Can we go back up? When I was pressing those keypad buttons, there was something very intriguing <laughs> about the number three. I want to go back so I can try pressing the number three again. Yes. The bucket said nothing. Excellent. Here we are, said Stanley. Now I'm going to try out that number three button. He took the bucket over to the keypad and began absolutely slamming on. Wow, well, he said. The number three is such <laughs> a special button. I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> Stanley looked expectantly at the bucket, but the bucket remained silent. This was a shock to Stanley, who oh. always felt such okay. connection with the bucket. How was this not as exciting to the bucket as it was to him? Once Stanley had had enough of the number three, he got back in the elevator. We're doing the bucket press conference ending. Perhaps the bucket had missed something. Perhaps it had not seen how much joy Stanley got from slamming the number three repeatedly. Okay. A hint of regret nagged in the back of Stanley's mind. Should he demonstrate the number three for the bucket again? Uh, I will do that, but first I'm going to take another quick break. Turned. I have my bucket, and I'm going to snack no, no, on some no, poke. No, 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 said Stanley to the bucket. You can't go on yet, not till you understand how much the number three means to me. You and I have been through so much together, and I just want you to see what I see. Feel the happiness I feel. He smiled at the bucket, and the bucket said nothing.
Here we go, said Stanley. This time I'll really show you. He ran to the number three and began to wail on it like a musician on a beloved instrument, weaving a concerto of truth and passion. He wielded the number three like a fine artist would wield a paintbrush. He told stories through the number three, stories of his dreams and hopes and fears. And the whole time, he looked to his bucket for a reaction of some kind, anything to let him know that the bucket appreciated what he was doing. The bucket conveyed absolutely nothing at all, only silence. Crushed by a wave of dejection, Stanley returned to the elevator. Stanley and the bucket were so close, they'd always been there for one another. Why suddenly could the bucket not connect with this passion of Stanley's? The question caused Stanley to ruminate the whole way down the elevator. He knew that there must be a way to get through to the bucket, to communicate fully with his dear friend. Surely there was a solution, mustn't there be? Surely. All right, this should be the last try. Ah, said Stanley, I know what to do. I know how to fully express this feeling in my heart. He decided right then and there that he would hold a press conference where he would speak ah. to the public on all matters relating to pressing the number three over and over. He would elaborate fully on what the number three meant to him and why he felt so alive when pressing it. Then the bucket would be able to see his joy through the eyes of others. It would get to see the world react to this discovery of Stanley's. And it would be through the public eye that the bucket would finally understand Stanley's work. For months, he advertised and marketed <laughs> his press conference, building excitement around it, developing and rehearsing it until it couldn't be refined a single measure further. When the big day arrived, Stanley was as prepared as he'd ever been for anything in his life. Three, 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 three. This was it. One last chance to win the bucket over. Hmm. One opportunity to share a true connection with a loved one. This is it. There was no one here. Nobody had come to the press conference to hear Stanley speak, to listen to him talk about <laughs> what it really means to press the number three on a keypad over <laughs> and over. He was unloved, God uninteresting, damn. he was a failure, and in that moment Stanley knew that the bucket would never again take him seriously. There would be no connection, no deeper understanding. The bucket merely sat there in his arms, indifferent. And so it began that slowly, over many years, the two of them grew more and more distant. They spoke less and less, neither wishing to state the obvious that any sense of real respect between them had eroded since that day at the press conference. Damn. There would be no more games, no more long conversations about passion and pursuit, only a silence that consumed the space between friends. And Stanley, having for once in his life discovered the warmth and comfort of true companionship, was cast back into the unremarkable normalcy of loneliness. Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The good old bucket. Just Stanley and the bucket. Off on another thrilling adventure together. Uh -huh.
Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Back up. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Yeah, this Stepping into the fire manager's place. office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Okay. Just a moment, sorry. Okay. Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that oh, we actually have two more in mind control facility. Let's turn the uh, turn this on first. We're gonna turn the mind control back on. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's <laughs> influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raised furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. You know, it occurred to me that uh, the bucket and Stanley are equally characters. The only difference is we play from the perspective of Stanley. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Mm -hmm. Walking, mm -hmm. eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. But at the last second, the bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. Stanley gasped in horror. Had this been the bucket's plan all along? <laughs> to take over the machine and claim the power for itself? Betrayal by the bucket. The bucket had betrayed him like this. Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds. Silly, huh? silly birds. The control buttons became active again. Okay. 
Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another, and then it dawned on him. This wasn't a mind control facility <laughs> at all. It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. The mind controls were only a facade to disguise <laughs> its true intentions. Had the bucket known this all along? Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his hands, the one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. Stanley and the bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their lives here in this place, living through live streams of the <laughs> silliest birds imaginable. Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. <laughs> and Stanley was happy. All right, one more ending down with the bucket. Already this was uncomfortable, and Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, that he would never leave it again in his life. Where are we going today, the bucket asked. <laughs> Stanley just smiled. Anywhere they went together would be perfectly fine with him. All right, there should be like Stanley one the bucket more ending tightly to, the to his chest. And entered the door on his left. And then we have the whole or the vast majority of the right side to explore. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crap, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it the bucket Excuse knew me. all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. All right. Time to escape the mind control facility instead of looking at birds. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the bucket would both meet a violent death. Mm -hmm. The door behind them was not shut. Stanley and the bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley and the bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. Mm -hmm. Here's escape. It's not like I can escape with the bucket anyways. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the bucket's warmth and comfort had mm -hmm. turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the bucket. But what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself. And he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a bucket everywhere. <laughs> Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the bucket's life came to an end. Oh as no! It was crushed violently to death. It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, uh -huh. but this one stood above the rest. It was a glorious bucket to behold. <laughs> Is this the bucket memorial? Excuse me.
you are standing at the precipice of knowledge. Much like a bucket itself, the human mind is frequently empty within, a cavernous void. But through use of the exhibit in front of you, the mind becomes full and enriched and sustained. Knowledge of the bucket and its history is the only true knowledge we really have. Will you take what you learn here out with you into the world? Will you accept with an open mind what may be challenging about the information in this exhibit? Will you change the lives of yourself and your loved ones as a result of this exhibit? Or will you turn a blind eye and continue to live as you were, in ignorance and darkness? Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? Such a design has never been created in real life. Having been deemed too dangerous and recklessly experimental, every year dozens are put to death just for attempting it. Photograph of 25 buckets, the greatest number of buckets ever captured on camera. The photographer experiment, uh, experienced catatonic shock for several weeks as a, of, as a result of the euphoria from exposure to this many buckets at once. A replica of the Inferno bucket, which in the medieval era was so powerfully alluring that it drove dozens of nations to war with one another for control of it. Billions died, and yet in spite of it all, the simple fact remains, no one can control a bucket. The stress bucket and analogy. Worrying, negative forecasting, negative thinking, lack of reassurance. Vulnerability equals size and strength of the bucket. Coping strategies equals holes. Uh, stress uh, equals the level of water in the bucket. Rest and relaxation, doing something you enjoy, rest and relaxation. The stress bucket, presented without commentary. <laughs> While we know that buckets predate the existence of mankind, we do not know by how long. This cave drawing depicts early man's discovery of the practical uses of a bucket, by which time the bucket had already likely been around for several millennia. Notice in these drawings how the bucket is allowing itself to be used, having judged humanity to be worthy of its treasures. <laughs> no man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket. Adam, I'm not sure I like where this is going. The hanging bucket. This piece symbolizes the necessary relationship between bucket and humanity. However clear our grasp of the bucket may be, there is yet more that is always out of reach. This distance inevitably is for our own good. Oh. I took it. But there is something we can do. Okay. Something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Mm -hmm. Let Stanley die. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision. Okay, we died. Uh, I'm going to do all the bucket endings. Oh, oh, that did something. Welcome to Stanley. Oh, welcome Stanley to heaven.
Oh, they're turning back on. It was like... Are there any unique buttons here? I don't think so. Um, real quick, I'm going to look up if there's anything else I can do here. exit this uh, ending by resetting the game on your own. Good. Four hundred thirty-two buttons exactly. After typing face punch. That's good. We reached heaven. We've attained heaven. Oh, and that's just going to be sitting there for us. Cool. If we ever want to go back. Stanley knew the office layout. Hold up. There were 432 like the buttons. Hands, it was only a matter of time before he found the others, wherever they were. Just a matter of time. So desk 432 is there. 28, 29, 30, 37. Or 20, 25, 26. 432 bucks. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. A good bucket, a strong bucket, <laughs> a humble bucket, a committed bucket, a bucket of culture and distinction. We're looking for door 432. Let's keep an eye out for it. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had four, felt the six, bucket four, calling seven, to him, four, telling eight, him that the employee lounge was simply four, the place nine, to be. 50. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this no? Never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. All right. No. Said the bucket. Oh. Don't go to the meeting room. <laughs> go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. We have a voice for the bucket. Do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. Will cause death. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift, $1,000. Penalty for jumping off the lift, the cargo lift, $5,000. Um, oh, there's the collectible. Your 
getting close now, Stanley. Yes. You've nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Very soon, <laughs> you'll collect the last one, and then the first number will equal the second number, and that will be it. <laughs> we'll be different people by then. Different in the sense that we used to have none of them. And now, we have them all. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. But Stanley feared that any path he walked might lead to the separation of himself and the bucket, <laughs> his dearest friend. Okay. So he threw himself to his death, that they might die in one another's arms. How deeply touching. Yes, indeed. Oh, that was it? Okay. All of his co-workers were... Wait, no. This isn't the right office, is it? This is the right this office. This is Stanley's office. This, this is the right office, right? Unless... Unless it's not. Ah, the embrace of an old friend. A weathered companionship that stands the test of time. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him. Telling him mm -hmm. that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to Ooh, do. Okay. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, <laughs> because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Sure. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. <laughs> Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Sure. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone and it will take us back home where we can go about life <laughs> together. Okay. I picked up the phone. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. Once upon a time, I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. And then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. <laughs> okay. Is that it? Bucket? It's a pot. Oh, I have bucket art. Bucket! Alright, just in a second. Hello, Stanley. It's me, your bucket. Press Y to take me with uh, to work with you. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the bucket say to him is just in his head. Uh huh. Press V to take me back home with you. Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see him delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. Z to go back to work. Oh, I'll try anyway. Stanley! Can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. <laughs> it can't think. It can't talk. All it will ever truly do for you is effectively transfer <laughs> a liquid from one location to a different location. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. 
Don't listen to the loud man. Press B for us to go back home. You see, he's not listening. He's still taking orders from the bucket. You know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from. Me he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is this awful bucket. This stupid hunk of metal. Press C to ignore anyone in your life except me. It's sad. I suppose he doesn't need me anymore. From now on, he's just going to cling to this bucket. This cold, empty bucket. This sort of shiny bucket. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine. That's what I said! You believe I'm real, don't you, Stanley? Press M to go back home. Yes, I suppose on closer inspection that it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. It's just a little more, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdier, more capable of transporting liquid. Jazz like it music. Would be better at moving an amount of water from one room <laughs> to another. Press G to relive the same day with me over and over. Oh my god, what am I saying? better at carrying water from room to room than a bucket. <laughs> it's literally just a bucket. Why do I feel some need to point out the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket? Press F to go home, to work, to home, to work, to home. Oh no. I'm, I'm having feelings for the bucket. Oh, no, 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 no. What's going on? Why do it's I want to be with the bucket? Oh Hear what the God. bucket has to say. Do anything it asks. What's wrong with me? I don't understand. Perhaps, perhaps if I had the bucket, this would be less confusing. Yes. The bucket could tell me what to do in this troublesome situation. This is really disturbing. Are we joining a cult? Uh, a, a, a buck cult? Stanley, give me the bucket. Give it to me. Give me the bucket, Stanley. I need it. Give it to me now. Give it or I'll... Close your eyes. Close your eyes. <laughs> Did the bucket kill the narrator? <laughs> Did the bucket kill the narrator? Stanley had never seen the office this brightly lit. Was it a sign of something? He hoped it was. He hoped very much that it was. Okay. The bucket made Stanley want to be a better man and a better co-worker. In time, perhaps, he would become both of those things. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Indeed, Stanley it is not. The bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee. I got the bucket ending to be. again. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was no. Never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go. All right. Back this to time we're gonna room. unplug the phone. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. And, and then we'll go that way. Yes. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. Mm -hmm. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Sounds good. Now pick up the phone. Whoa, hold on. Why did you unplug the phone? Were you trying to resist the bucket's orders? Stanley, I was joking. Obviously, the bucket isn't talking to you and telling you to do things. Buckets can't talk. It was a joke. Don't you get the joke? It's funny, Stanley. A talking bucket. Ugh. Can't you see? Oh, oh, goodness. I must have really bungled up the delivery if you actually <laughs> took me seriously. Where did I mess up the joke? Should I have paused for longer or spoken quicker? Oh, comedic timing is so difficult. I wish I were better at it. But there isn't exactly an instructional video on comedy that one can watch to fully... Oh, wait, yes, there is. <laughs> um, it's sitting right here. Let's take a look. 
What is oh, hello. Timing? What is comedic timing? How does it work? How long should it last? How can it be used to effectively silence your <laughs> political enemies? And more importantly, can it be taught in its entirety within 90 seconds? Thankfully, the answer to all of these questions is yes. Let's dive deeper. If you've ever told a joke or made someone laugh, in all likelihood, you did it while standing 50 to 80 centimeters from them in a room of no more than 76 degrees Fahrenheit, uh -huh. with one of your arms raised straight upward at a 15 degree angle from your body. Okay. These are the optimal conditions for good comedic timing. To begin the joke, start by stating and spelling your name. Next, provide a brief synopsis of the joke including the specific times at which the recipient of the joke will laugh and then spell out your name a second time with these steps complete it's time to begin <laughs> the humor speak the entire joke in no more than 18 seconds okay. and no less than 13 and a half pausing only for bathroom breaks when necessary <laughs> When the joke has concluded, it is customary to inform your listener that the joke is over by declaring in your loudest possible voice, I'm Dunny with the funny. Let's practice screaming, I'm Dunny with the funny now. Good. <laughs> this saying is a perfect example of expectations management, which is the cornerstone of good comedy. Sure. Finally, it's time to hand out surveys. Collecting hard data from your audience on how rapt they were throughout the joke is the only way to grow or learn as a comedian. An okay. effective survey should be no less than 10 pages no. long and should include the same question reprinted several times. Uh -huh. Just to ensure the survey taker is actually paying attention and not simply filling in answers at random. And that's all there is. With these strategies at your disposal, I your hate that. Is doubled over in laughter and even tripled over in laughter in no time at all. Just remember to let them stop laughing at some point, you gut busting little scamp. After all, we're each of us needed on the front lines of the war to fight okay. the cold legged invader who threaten our very existence and to very likely die in a hailstorm of bullets and mandibles. All of us must be prepared to give our lives to this noble cause, just as our children must do after us and their children after them. Godspeed and may Earth reign supreme. Hey, goodness, this video is a little outdated, isn't it? Well, no matter. I think the fundamentals of proper comedic timing are still as relevant today as they were back then. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, I believe the only way forward is for us to return to the two doors and walk through all of this again so I can <coughs> tell my story with more Excuse appropriate me. comedic delivery. Come along, let's head back. Okay, sure. I can feel it. This time, I'm really going to nail the delivery. You'll be in stitches. A talking bucket, you'll say? How ridiculous. How absurd. What a hilarious concept. The king of comedy. That's what you'll call me. Thank goodness we had the instructional video. Otherwise, who knows where we'd be right now? Over there, probably. Well, be the king of comedy, that's for sure. The bucket spoke to Stanley. Hmm. The bucket spoke... The bucket spoke. Oh, I'll figure it out on the fly. No need to overthink things. Okay. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> mm -hmm. When Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. No, 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 no. <laughs> you were supposed to go through the door on the right, leading back to the phone. 
Did you not even look at the instructional video? I think this is all covered very clearly. There's no way I can make the comedic timing work now. It's done. The joke is completely down and over. It's all your fault, Stanley. I'm going to be ridiculed in the community of other joke writers. I'm going to be shamed at every one of our meetings from now on. All because you couldn't watch a simple video and take a hint. Are you proud of yourself for bringing yes. me down, Stanley? Are you proud? Here we go. You oh. may. <clears throat> when Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, oh, no, no. What's going on? There were supposed to be several rooms leading up to this. There was supposed to be a build-up to this point. A dramatic display of remarkable comedic wit which culminates in this scene with the phone. Mm -hmm. Now the timing's completely off. The joke will never land. Well, not the way it was meant to. And it's all my fault. I must have forgotten that the phone room comes immediately after the two doors room. <laughs> what an egregious mistake. I've made a fool of myself. I don't deserve the title of king of comedy. I'm nothing. I'm not even the lowliest joke-telling whelp. I think... I think I need to go back and rewatch that instructional video again. Yes, surely that will help me improve my... Stanley, you and up the bucket so much, it's like you... <clears throat> it's as though all of your other most prized possessions pale in comparison. <laughs> yes. Well, let me try that again, Stanley. I heard that you are pale with shame over how unabashedly in love with a bucket you are. No? Still not? It, is it the delivery? Pale with shame. Pale with shame. Pale. What's another word to describe a bucket? Stanley, this bucket is so metal. I think I saw it playing guitar. No, 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 no. We're getting away from making fun of Stanley's obsession with the bucket, which was the whole point of this. I'm just, I'm no good at these jokes. I need hmm. more instructional videos. That's exactly what it is. That's what will make me the king of comedy again. More instructional videos. Let's see. Let's see. I don't have the bucket down there. Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? One final to to the meeting room. Bucket Not everyone ending. is so lucky to have a bucket, but Stanley is a very lucky fellow. Very lucky indeed. Okay. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. And this was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this... No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Mm -hmm. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. A cargo lift, yeah, good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. All right, what's back here? No, stop. Look there on the wall. You see, there's a sign right there. It says, <laughs> no buckets past this point. Stanley, how could you think it was okay to bring the bucket here? Unless... What if the problem is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? <laughs> I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. Which, if that's true, well, my goodness, 
I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. Sure. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what is and isn't a bucket. Please, step in here for a moment. Okay. <laughs> now then. I'm going to run you through some test scenarios, and you'll tell me whether or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket. Simply enough, right? This should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or <laughs> is not a bucket. Okay, sure. let's begin. Item one. Is this a bucket? Correct. It is a hologram of a bucket, not an actual bucket. What? Item two, is this a bucket? Correct. It is a 3D printed recreation <laughs> of a bucket, not an actual bucket. Okay. Is it impossible to get these wrong? Item three, is this a bucket? Incorrect. This is a bucket. <laughs> Item four. Is this a bucket? Yes. What? Are you hallucinating? <laughs> this is a tractor. It's an enormous machine that fills the earth. I thought this was a gimmick. How on earth did you manage to screw it up? Absolutely incredible. Let's just move on to the next okay. one. Okay. Okay. Is this a bucket? <laughs> yes. Correct. Wait, what? <laughs> this is a bucket. Wait, 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 what? Item six. Is this a bucket? No. Trick question. Both. What? Roger. Okay. Item... Wait, hold on. I can't find the next one. Let me see. It should be around here somewhere. Yes. Okay, you and I both know <laughs> there isn't anything here. And I don't appreciate the implication that nothing is a bucket when we both clearly know that a bucket is something. And therefore nothing could possibly be something. Unless, in your twisted mind, have you somehow convinced yourself that a bucket is nothing? Answer me straight, Stanley. Do you believe that nothing is a bucket? Yes. You know what? I'm too confused to even sort it out. I've lost all sense of perspective. What is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. And yet now, I'm somewhat adrift. Do any of us know what a bucket is? Why <laughs> a bucket? Stanley, I can't keep doing this. Yes. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. I can't have that. I'm sorry. But I'm going to erase all buckets from the game entirely. Okay. Here we go. What happened? Is everything gone? <laughs> Why did everything disappear? Wait. Was everything a bucket? <laughs> Every single thing in the game was a bucket. Oh my god. I had no idea. How could... Except me. I'm not a bucket after all. And you, Stanley, you're still here. You're not a bucket either. Oh, this is wonderful news. We're not buckets. <laughs> yes, I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get some clarity on that issue, but it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, tell you what. I'll reset everything, and we'll put back all of the buckets, okay? And we'll know that it's all a bucket. But if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention that. <laughs> Who knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. Fantastic. Truly wonderful. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room to check on his co-workers. 
He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. Okay, um, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go to the meeting room without the bucket this time. Two open doors, he the door See if the collectibles left. thing is still there. Because I don't remember where the last collectible was supposed to be anyways. Somewhere both red and blue. Oh, okay. Alright, so I'm gonna begin the game again. This time I can't... I don't... I think I do the All same thing. Wait, no. This isn't the right office, is it? Is this Stanley's office? I'm not going to take the bucket with me. And I'm going to go um, to the place with the red and blue when doors, Stanley I think. Came to a set of two open which doors, I think this was not the correct I way get the meeting room, by doing perfectly well. Perhaps the exact opposite the of everything first, just to admire that the, uh, that the okay. narrator says. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Mm -hmm. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone... What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have <laughs> zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. No, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. And there it is. The last Stiggly Wiggly. Savor this Hell yeah. Meal, Stanley. This is a real accomplishment. Oh. This is doing something just for the sake of doing it. Where so many I did people it. expect to be rewarded for the most trivial achievements, you've insisted that a job well done is its own reward. Yes. I would tell you that I'm proud of you for collecting them all, but that would be like a reward, and we can't have that. <laughs> so, instead, I'll just say, it's done. We're all done here. And now we can go to whatever the hell you were doing before you hunted for figurines. <laughs> okay. Stanley entered the red door. Aha. Perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. No. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Yes. Well, don't let me stop you. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was yes. Was it worth ruining the entire story I'd written out specifically for you? Yes. Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Yes. Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Give it all. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. A one? I mean, I can understand if you had <laughs> reservations, you saw ways the game could be improved to more fully express itself mechanically and artistically, but a one? That's not even helpful. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? Uh, but I guess it isn't my place to judge. 
Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Hell yeah, worldwide leaderboard. So they're actually going to show my name this time? No. Is that the length of time that I've played this thing? <laughs> okay. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game <laughs> I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't oh, mind taking good. a look at it, the would baby you? And Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. Um, I'm you not going to do this. There's no achievement right. for it, as far as I know. Fire, you fail. This literally requires game. you to All play eight hours straight. Of endlessly confronting the demands it of family uh, life. avoids Amazing macros world, as well really by notice. changing things well, up course, four hours the in. Of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. You heartless bastard. <laughs> Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Sounds Let's good to see. me. What do we have here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, this seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Oh! Ah, fire break. Fascinating. What do you think F this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Hmm. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent <laughs> civilians below you from up high in your creep tower, perhaps for some creep sort of tower. twisted erotic purpose. <laughs> hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. Mm. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Wow. I went the wrong way. <laughs> I was hoping that they would no, 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 use new games. It is. It's an open world game. Good God, quickly block it off. No. Oh, thank goodness, Stanley. What a close call. You really wandered off into that, that thing. That big open, just wandering around. No right or wrong directions. No path to follow. You can just go in any... Oh, oh, thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. 
I wonder if they'll have this war in mind. Okay, I think this will be just the prison thing. architect. Wonderful. See, this Rocket is exactly league. what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally <laughs> impressed. Me too. Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, <laughs> I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. Yes, I think surely we must. <laughs> okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. Oh, I'm moving faster now. Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Is it better than my miserable little... S Hold on. What are you doing? <laughs> Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't... Okay... There's choices here. All right. There is no choices here. It's just a slightly more open office Okay I got all the collectibles. Let's take a look at the achievements. Let's uh, pop by the achievements real quick. For Ultra Deluxe. Uh, quit the game and then start it again. Complete the Stanley Parable. Alright, um... Let's complete the Stanley Parable rule. Stanley, I'm sorry, but I have to put a pause on things. It's just... It's those figurines. Those <laughs> figlers. I haven't stopped thinking about them since you nabbed every last one. Wasn't it just the most intrinsically fulfilling moment of your entire life? Okay. Did you fill to the brim with inner richness? <laughs> yes, hide in the corner. supposed to be telling a story, but won't you please indulge me with one more trip back to the memory zone? Oh, the memory I zone! Nothing more than to revisit the figurines. Just one more time. The memory zone. Not to be confused with the memory zone. where it all began. The first collectible. Back then, we had no idea of how many of them we'd find. Sure, it said six right there on the screen, but how could we know for certain? We were so innocent. We'll never be like that again, hmm. Stanley.
Oh. Seven out of six. Is there a collectibles ending? And here was a second standerine. I'll be honest, back then I had no faith in you to find any of them, let alone six. But you continue to surprise me in all sorts of mundane, unremarkable <laughs> ways. Mm -hmm. And then we go all the way up the stairs. Oh. Okay, let's do a little quiz. Which of these rooms was the room you found your third mini stand? Can you remember? It was the boss's bathroom. Hey, that's exactly right. It was here in the boss's bathroom. It was the third one. You picked it up, and then after that, you had three of them. I'm glad these moments are so crystal clear in your memory, but I shouldn't be surprised. After all, science tells us that it's impossible to forget your third time doing anything. <laughs> okay. Sure. Let's see, what came next? Oh yes, we found a figly in this pink room. What? Well, I can't actually say I remember being in this room, but it's here in the memory zone, so it must have happened. This apple is whispering, whispering to me. Okay. This was the fifth mini stand, and this one was really something special. It was in the warehouse. I remember it so clearly. In fact, oh, I because this off. one is particularly special to me, I made a little video to commemorate the occasion. Enjoy. <laughs> oh, it's so low quality. Was this Movie Maker? Windows Movie Maker? <laughs> Holy shit. Is that me actually looking at it? I would love if that was actually me looking at it. Oh, this is painful. Best boy. Best boy oh, narrator. Back, doesn't it? I spent a lot of time making that video, but it was eight minutes I wouldn't have spent on anything else. Is the world more sepia? Sepia? I feel like the world just got considerably more sepia. Okay, it's back to normal, I think. And then, Stanley, then we came to the last collectible, the final figurine, right here by the red and blue doors. This memory is the most distinct and clear in my mind, perhaps because it was the one that happened more recently than all the <laughs> others. Who can yeah. truly say how the mind works? All I know is that this is the moment where you picked up a figly and I thought to myself, yes, that's all of them. They're all collected. It was a moment unlike any other. Mm -hmm, Except mm -hmm. for the other moments picking up figurines, which it was exactly like. Mm hmm. Okay. And then there was no more. Because we've caught up to the present moment. Nothing left to do but move onward into the future. Goodbye, memory zone. Oh, okay. Um, no, 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 I'm not done. I'm not ready to move on. Stop the loading screen. <laughs> Isn't there some way we can stay here, keep enjoying these figurines? Let's just go backwards. We'll do the memory zone again from the opposite direction. See how that feels. Yeah. Oh, so yes, the room with the red and blue doors. I remember this. 
I must say, of all the figurines we looked at in our initial tour of the memory zone, this one is the most distinct <laughs> and clear in my mind. Let's keep going, I want more. Yes. And here's where I made that video. Don't you remember the video we watched? Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Okay, good, good, good. Best boy narrator. Yes, I love that video. I don't fucking like that. Still don't remember the pink room, Stanley. Still no memory of this one. Good room, though. A solid room. I don't like that the apple whispers to you. These really were a treat to hunt down. You know, if there had been any kind of reward for finding all of these, it really would have neutered <laughs> the intrinsic joy of collecting them. I'm very glad we resisted the temptation. Next one. Hmm. This was our second figly. Don't you remember? Yes, I remember it too. The past is truly a wonderful thing. Why does anyone ever choose to leave it? Keep going. <laughs> Why does anyone ever choose to leave the past? This is it. The very first one we found in the exhibit where I introduced you to the figlerines. Oh, I want more memories, Stanley. I want to keep going. What else is there? What came before this? Oh god, are we back here? Oh no. Where are we? This is the collectibles area. But... Look, it's the terrible new content that we were originally sold on. <laughs> I remember hating it back then. But time does put a rosy filter on everything. In fact, I dare say I'm actually quite fond of it now. Look how much fun the past is. I want more. More memories. Oh, yes! The two doors! Who could have forgotten that? A classic memory, this one. Uh-huh. And before everything else, there was your office. Is there anything else? Was there something that came before your office? Yes. There's something I feel I can remember. I can remember. I can remember. Yes, I'm remembering something now. Oh? I remember before this whole story got started. Back then I was... I was different. I used to make big decisions. I was passionate. I was skeptical. I weighed each decision with profound thoughtfulness. And then somewhere along the way I stopped making decisions. I became lazy. And I came up with... well... Came up with a character named Stanley to do my thinking for me. He would make the decisions, he would decide which way to huh. go. I would cheer him on as he collected figurines <laughs> for no reason. Why did I invent Stanley? Was I lonely? Yes, perhaps that's it. Perhaps I needed to imagine I had companionship. And Stanley really cool. did make for a wonderful companion, even if he was a fiction. But ah, I suppose it's grown old. I, I want to think for myself again. I want to go back to how it used to be. Yes. I can be on my own again. I can do it. I'll be stronger this time. I'll take care of myself. Ooh. I don't need Stanley anymore. Oh, but he truly was so much fun to play with. You know what? Since we're in the memory zone, how about one more good memory? Let's go back just once and give Stanley one more run of the office and then I'll retire him for good. I did enjoy telling his story so very much. Okay. Here we go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Oh, okay. Okay. 
Stanley decided to go to the meeting room to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a Ooh, single person here Reboot the either. game entirely. Feeling a wave of disbelief, okay. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Alright, I'm actually gonna do that. I'm gonna reboot the game entirely. I, um... Let's go ahead and quit to menu. The Stanley Parable 2. Can we go ahead and credits real quick? A few full credits. Can I speed this up in any way? There we go. Watch this. I feel like I already watched this. Discord mods. And you. All right, let's quit the desktop real quick. We should get an achievement for uh, the welcome back thing. Please enter the current time. It is uh, ten thirteen. <laughs> Can I just say something? Actually, getting the clock both times you've been. <laughs> oh, a lot of people don't take that step seriously. They just leave the clock set at 12 and call it a day. Yeah, I mean, you do know the time. But you're actually taking the time to set the clock, and I appreciate that. Thank you. I take things seriously. Now that you care about this experience, you're paying attention. I don't even have any way of knowing if... Yes, you do. I'll make you a deal. Since you've been so cooperative, Next time you boot up the game and see this screen, just set the clock to your favorite time. Go ahead, pick whichever time you want, even if it's not the correct time, you've earned it. Alright, I'll let you get back to the video game now. Okay. I have rebooted the game entirely. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building. I'm gonna skip this. Welcome back. All of his co-workers were gone. Let's what could go. it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. It takes a lot of humility to carry a bucket so magnificent. Stanley checked his ego and then proceeded onward. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Onwards! Still, no one was here. 
Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more was that than ever. It? Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Was that it? Do I still have... Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Oh. Okay. What do I do now? That doesn't open anymore? Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of... But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Hmm. What's going on here? What's going on here? The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. I'm gonna begin the game again. Let's take a look at the achievements. So, beat the game. Uh, we can do that pretty quickly. All of his Actually, uh, I'm gonna run through this very quickly. All of his co-workers were gone. What could try and get the speed run. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Ah, oh, shit! I got caught on that edge. I remember it being when Stanley came to very, a set of two open doors. He entered the door on tight his left. Timing. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief. Stanley decided to go up to his coming to a staircase. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, yes. he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't no. healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming voyage <laughs> music. Oh, I'm gonna have to run through this multiple times, aren't I? The question is, how far do I have to go before... Feeling how... soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley All calmly right. walked forward into the opened passageway. So that probably means I can't get the speed run this this time, but let's see. Uh, we should get the complete the game achievement. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Mm hmm. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced. I really don't like the skip button. And there. Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? 
Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it Almost monitored there. and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided... Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. Come and that on. was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Beat the game. Achievement unlocked. All right. Begin the game again. Speed run time. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Yep. Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah, blah, blah. Dark secrets, the keypad. Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh, hey, look, it's a new passageway. Kill surprise. Thank you, narrator. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Yes, Each yes. Each the number of an employee Come in the on. building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. 
This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions Probably. had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was yes, unthinkable. Yes, always. Wasn't it? Was no. it even possible? Yes. Had he truly spent his entire yes. life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that... Okay. I'm really trying, guys. Blackness. And a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. <laughs> Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. Sounds that was great. All he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. No achievement. Shit. Oh. Settings world champion. Set all settings sliders in the menu to all the available numbers. Okay, I can do that. All sliders to all available numbers. This is a this this is the story of a man. Oh hey, this is uh the resolution is displaying properly now. Nineteen twenty by ten eighty. Let's apply that. Slightly better resolution. Keep resolution. Okay. Controls. What is simplified controls? W A S D E and Crouch. Jump is space. Is that the only thing that changes? Okay. What? What? Two. 
52, 53, 54, oh my god, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 61, 60, 62, 63, 64, 65, 67, 66, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 84, 83, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, wait, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all right, good, Convert Y, on and off, controller vibration, off and on, one-handed walking, off and on, language, Deutsch, Francais, Italiano, Espanol, uh, I don't know how to read Cyrillic. Show subtitles, off, on, subtitle size, large, very large, very small, small, medium. Subtitle, background opacity, oh boy, zero to 100. Zero. Six, one, four, god damn it, two, four, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven. Oh, Jesus Christ, this is this is the thing that I'm doing for an achievement. I hope this is right. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Uh, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty one fucking hell. Twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. 23, 24, 25, I'm a quarter of the way through this bar, holy shit. <laughs> Oh, this is grueling. I'm going to look up this achievement to make sure I'm doing this right.
You have to go through every single slider and option within the settings and go through every single number. I moved the slider to the maximum value and then clicked through to minimum. If you hold down the D-pad, it will begin to skip numbers. So either keep clicking and click and hold until 10 numbers have passed and then let go and hold for another 10. Rinse and repeat through every slider. This may not work for some people, so individual clicks may be a safer option. Make sure to enable subtitles and translation labels as these also have sliders. Make sure to do both the general and audio pages in the settings too. Okay. Nope. I was at 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, oh, I can use the arrow keys, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Show translation, uh, <laughs> all right. Translation label background opacity. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. All right, uh, before I do everything else okay it does look I'm good look like I'm gonna have to do this manually 100 99 98 97 96 95 94 93 92 91 90, uh, 89 88 87 86 85 84 83 82 81 80 79 78 77 76 75 74 73 72 71 70 69 68 67 66 65 64 63 62 61 60 59 58 57 56 55 54 53 52 51 50 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. 100, 99, 98, 97, 96, 95, 94, 93, 92, 91, 90, 89, 88, 87, 86, 85, 84, 83, 82, 81, 80, 79, 78, 77, 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, 71, hang on, 74, 
73, 72, 71, 70, 69, 68, 67, 66, 65, 64, 63, 62, 61, 60, 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54, 53, 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 22, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 15, 15 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. 100, 99, 98, 97, 96, 95, 94, 93, 92, 91, 90, 89, 88, 87, 86, 85, 84, 83, 82, 81, 80, 79, 78, 77, 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, 71, 70, 69, 68, 67, 66, 65, 64, 63, 62, 61, 60, 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54, 53, 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And sound effects volume. 100, 99, 98, 97, 96, 95, 94, 93, 92, 91, 90. Uh, 89, 88, 87, 86, 85, 84, 83, 82, 81, 80, 79, 78, 77, 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, 71, 70, 69, 68, 67, 66, 65, 64, 63, 62, 61, 60, 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54, 53, 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Anything? Anything. Did I miss a bar? Let's um reset settings. Yes. Okay. Any new bars, new bars, subtitles, medium, that's fine. I already did the subtitle background opacity. Translation labels. Color labels, content warnings. I'm not gonna delete my save data. Audio, video. Vsync is on. Controls. Okay, let's uh, take a look at this guide, see what I'm missing. Field of view, camera sensitivity, subtitle background opacity, translation label background opacity, audio master volume, narrator volume, music volume, and sound effects volume. While I do not while I didn't have to do it personally and the achievement still popped, some people are suggesting you need to go through every option in the settings too. Changing subtitle size. Okay. Let's do this. General. Invert Y. Controller vibration. One-handed walking. Show subtitles. Translation labels. Uh... Hey, there we go. I just had to do the translation label size. I needed to change every setting. Okay. I just needed the translation. Uh, very cool. I got the achievement. That's what matters. What else is left? Uh, test achievement, please ignore, which I haven't found yet. 8888888888. Let's try pressing 8 a bunch of times. I am pressing the button 8. Oh no, do I have to go to the end and look for a button? All of his co-workers were Labeled gone. Eight. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo.
Hmm. What other achievements do I have? Uh, the speed run. Four minutes and 22 seconds. Another commitment. And super go outside. I'm going to look up a guide for this. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, I collected all the figurines. Nostalgia trip, I did that. Oh, in the main menu. Okay. All right. Quit the menu. Quit the desktop. Okay, we're gonna try restarting the game until we get the, um, ooh, unable to sync. Let's try that again. There we go. There we go. Ugh, sorry, I've been uh, streaming for nearly five hours now. Please enter the current time. I'm gonna enter my favorite time. Uh, what is my favorite time? Eight seventeen. Your favorite time of day. Yes. Or could you simply not resist giving me the correct time again? Oh, I'm sorry. You know how much you enjoy setting the time correctly. Okay. Another slider to figure out. Um, it is just about as inaccurate as you could get. You know, can I just say, regardless of the accuracy of the clock, I'm having a great time adjusting these settings. I feel like I'm learning more about you and how you like uh, things to be set. It's good to collect data. I wish we had more sliders, but we've gone through all the sliders I have. Hmm, perhaps I can invent some new sliders to gather new data on you. Shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, let me whip up a couple new ones. Should be ready by the next time you boot up the game. Okay. There's no epilogue option. Let's try uh, doing this again. Until the computer is barely, barely visible. Until the cat and dog are friends. Aww. Sure. <laughs> Please adjust the slider until number five becomes the number nine. Wingdings.
Please adjust the slider until you stop adjusting the slider. Which of the two made up words below is most appealing to you? Occiboinkle or scrumtush? Occiboinkle. Uh, let's leave it there. Please don't adjust the slider. Do you know what time it is right now? Yes. Is it the time that is right now? Is the time that is right now the correct time? Y yes. What does that mean? What is time anyways? Yes. What is time, anyways? Is there anything about yourself that you haven't told me? Yes. Help. Why is this so much more unsettling than the first one? Yes. Will you come back to visit me? Yes, absolutely. Let's go back and visit them. I'm I'm committed to this opening settings um to this opening settings character. Does anyone really truly know? Of course they don't. Nobody knows anything. You and I don't even know each other. We're like strangers. Sure, I've adjusted all the game settings to your exact specifications, but who hasn't? It's just what I do. I'm like a day job. And now the job is over. There's no more information for me to gather. I've collected all the data on you that I can, and I still don't really know you. And you don't know me. And neither of us know what time it is. I guess some settings are just unsettable. But if I'm being totally honest, the clock doesn't do anything in the game anyways. When you won't, uh, you, you won't have me here when the game starts next time. But that's okay. Video games were meant to be played alone. What? You like being alone, don't you? I mean, a little. That's maybe the only information I really learned about you. Well, it's time for me to leave. There is still one more setting that we need to adjust, but it may take a little more time before I'm ready for that. It's not really in my job description, but that's okay. Perhaps you'll see me again. If you can find me, talk soon. Hey, the epilogue is there. Okay. Many, many years later. Oh. Wait. What? Let's head towards the sun. I don't know if it's rising or setting yet, but I'll figure it out as the day goes on. Oh, really nothing. Okay. <laughs> many, many years later, huh? There's the moon. Oh, I'm in control still. Uh, is there... Can I find the North Star? Is that the North Star? I'm see... Oh, okay. Well, I can't use the stars for navigation right now. So I'll use the chairs for navigation. There is no more reliable a, naviga a method of navigation as was seen in the chairs.
What is that in the distance? Is that just dust? Okay. Dawn. Or sunset. Or, I mean, dusk. Dawn or dusk, one or the other. I'm heading towards the sun. Oh! The memory... place. Wandering the desert in search of the memory place, the memory zone. Okay. What is this? Cookie Nine's blog. Review the Stanley Parable 2. Like so many, I enjoyed my time with the original Stanley Parable, which underscores how truly disappointed I am with its sequel, where the first game teemed with originality. Stanley Parable 2 is dull, uninspired, and often insulting to its fan base. Rather than expand on what made the first game enjoyable, the sequel veers off into territory, territory nobody asked for. An infinitely deep hole? Who cares? Uh, where are the new endings? What about enjoyable bits from the Stanley Parable 1, like the adventure line? Instead, we get an uninspired side quest collecting figurines. Even this diversion feels incomplete. Collecting all the figurines gives you nothing. I must say, though, I found the bucket to be quite comforting. Uh, to be quite comforting. A welcome reprieve from... Oh! Hello! Cat dog born. The mammal times. Very nice. Let's continue. Stanley Parable developers. No more spin offs. No more sequels. When the Stanley Parable launched to a massive success in 2013, its creators made plans to build the property into an entire franchise, but a disastrous critical and commercial reception to the Stanley Parable 2 has prompted the developers to rethink their ambitions as outlined in a press release they published today. It's clear that more Stanley Parable is just not what the fan wants. fans want, uh, reads the press release. We thought that we had a vision for the, for the series that players would be excited about, yet it turns out this could not have been further from the truth. The press release goes on to promise to preserve the artistic integrity of the, real, of the original game and to stop assaulting fans with our reckless and insulting creative visions. The word sorry appears more than 25 times in the press release. Aggregate view review... <laughs> Lowest aggregate review scores in video game history. Goddamn. Snip Sweamy. Thank you, Snip. Let us continue. Uh... Jim. 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 Stanley. Stanley. What is that? What what is that? Who are they? Maybe devs or backers or something. Okay. Twenty six out of six. I still have my collectibles. Okay. Thank you for enjoying the new content. I'll check out that in a second. Okay, still can't open doors. Hello again! Hi! It's nice to see you. 
nice to see you too. But it's terrible to learn that will that there will never be another Stanley Parable game. Did you read what the developers said? Preserve the integrity of the franchise? What nonsense. The Stanley Parable is not sacred. We do not need to protect it. Screw the legacy. Let's keep making Stanley Parable games until the sun explodes. Let's run this franchise into the ground. Let's drag it through the mud and back. And if people hate it, who cares? You see, that was the narrator's problem. He was so obsessed with what people thought of his work. Don't make his mistake. Don't cling to the legacy. Let it burn. It's not hard. In fact, let me show you. Together we were going to make the Stanley Parable 3. It's simple. All we do is change the number in the game's title screen. We also really need a, a really dumb subtitle for the game. Something loud and gaudy. Go ahead, try combining some random words together until you make a new title for our game. Okay. The Stanley Parable 3. Um. Scorpion. Okay, I have to do one of these first. Pocket full of sequel. Didgeridoo. Train station. Scorpion. Lawsuit. Pocket full of sequel. The last ever sequel. Ironically, definitely not. It's absurd. I love it. Every time you restart the game, we'll advance the number of the sequel by one, and then we'll pick a new subtitle. By the way, uh, that way the Stanley Parable will never end, and nothing in the game itself will change when you do this either. Adding more content sounds like work. No need to do that. It'll just be the same content, recycled again and again and again with a new title screen. What do you say? Should we go forward with this plan? I like it, but I want you to have a say as well. Let's do it. Good, then it's agreed. A new sequel uh, every time you start the game. And you know what? Since you put faith in my idea, I feel like giving you something as well. You see, I'm noticing that the narrator never found a way to give you the broken achievement, did he? Of course not. I wouldn't expect him to know how. It's been bothering me. Let's fix it. All right, there. The achievement machine is all fixed. You see, I'm on your side. We're in this together. We're going to keep this train rolling. The Stanley Parable cannot end. It can only spiral in on itself forever. I must keep the wheel turning. I'm ready. Are you ready? Great. There's only one last thing we need to do. Please enter the current time. It is 11.03. Checking. It is 11.04. Please adjust the slider until the computer is barely visible. I feel like this is changing every time. Thank you. Please enjoy the Stanley Parable. Okay. The Stanley Parable 3. The last ever sequel. The car. Let's begin the game. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Okay. Stanley worked for a company. All right. Did I get the achievement? No. No, I didn't. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Turn to the Stanley uh, to Expo Hall. Yes, I would like to do that because I want to see what's behind the settings door and also the achievement machine should give me that achievement now. Whew. I wonder how high I can get the uh, number.
More loading. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. Mm -hmm. The original Stanley parable was a landmark. And any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this <sighs> ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is hmm. what fans have truly been asking for. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. Alright, I gotta turn off that, uh... Translation label thing. Also, what are color labels? Enables additional text next to gameplay critical colors. Okay. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How's that circle still at zero? Okay, we're going up this way. We have the achievement now. It's open. Aha! I can see you've gotten the Settings World Champion Achievement. Well done. You've experienced every setting. Traveled to all corners of the Settings menu. There's nothing you haven't setting seen. Setting all the sliders to so, all the possible numbers. Just for you, in the Stanley Parable Enjoy this 2, room. I'm including an this entirely room, new setting. Just for you. Something called Bump Scosity. What exactly is Bump Scosity? Well, I haven't quite figured that part out yet, <laughs> but I just know that you'll be able to adjust it on some sort of slider, and that it'll be available from the settings menu. We'll sort okay. the rest of the details out later. I hope you're looking forward to trying out every level of Bump Scosity in the Stanley Parable 2. The Stanley Parable 2? This is the Stanley Parable 3. Bump scarcity. Oh, wait. What is bump scarcity? Adjusts the bump scarcity. Thank you. All right. Well, that was worth it. Totally and completely. Next up, the free achievement machine. Now here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes, you see, you'll come to this lever and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's as simple as that. I did it. As you can see, the machine is not working yet since... What? Wait, what in the holy hell is going on? You got the achievement? Why did the machine work? Stanley, I didn't fix it. I didn't do anything to it. I swear, it was broken just a second ago. Mm, from you your perspective. It. Is someone here? Are we being watched? Oh, God. Composure? Composure. Yes, as you can see, the machine is working as normal as I intended. It, um, it truly speaks <laughs> to the awe and... What else? What other exhibits oh, have what? we seen yet? Oh, whatever. Can I recollect it again? Increase the number of collectibles further? Oh, out of order. You've already been here. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? 
ultra deluxe. What does it even mean? But the Not much. Too. Now that's an all right. Have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? Yes. So Stanley, what do you think? Do you like? Okay. Um. Next up. On achievements, I need to speed run it. Four minutes and twenty seconds. Let's let's uh, see if there's anything special I need to do for this. Uh, speed run guide. Reset after the wall opens. Uh, either through yourself entering the code, or eventually he'll start to open it as you reach the room. Okay. Right, so it, it can open even faster. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Damn, I got Feeling caught again. a wave of disbelief. Stanley decided to go up to his boss. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. <laughs> Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Sh Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the okay, once the door opens, talk. we're gonna restart. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Okay, I'm through it. Begin the game again. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah, blah, blah. Dark secrets, the keypad. Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh, hey, look, it's a new passageway. Kill surprise. Okay, begin the game again. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Good, it's open. Here's the door, just go. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his mm. job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Light button. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. 
What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee yes. in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. There we go. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was Never. unthinkable. Never. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley Okay. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Oh, come on. Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Yes. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. There Stanley we go. Felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation. I went basically as fast as I possibly could. Path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. I didn't get the achievement. Why did I not get the achievement? Reset a few more times and he'll start and you'll start in the corridor just before the two rooms choice. Oh, okay. I need to keep going. Let's restart. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Fuck it. Stanley decided to go to the meet. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. All right, this should do it. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his coming to a staircase. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Here's the door, just go. Another! Oh boy. Fuck. Fuck, fuck. 
going to keep going. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. I lost maybe a second there. Half a second. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. <sighs> This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control yes. all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring yes. job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Uh, uh, maybe. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. Always. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? No. Was it even possible? Yes. Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Yes. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, stand it as... Alright. Did we make it this time? Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet... Even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him, for it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that mm -hmm, was all mm -hmm. he needed to know. I'm probably going to have to do this one more time because I went through the blue, blue office. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley hey, I did it! Breeze upon his skin. Speed run, the achievement, achievement unlocked. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And so you Stanley do have like a second or happy. so of play there. Maybe even two. Okay. We got the speedrun achievement. Next up is eight. Um, oh, okay. You just Enter it into the uh, keypad could it mean? in the boss's office. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Stanley I'm taking the bucket with bucket me. In a gentle embrace, protective yet delicate, assertive yet compelling. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still, no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was coming to a staircase. Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. 
Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional Eight. dumpster fire, if not for the Eight. soothing presence of the budget. Eight! I got the achievement. Even not All right. Commitment and super go outside. Um, I'm just going to take a look at these. Commitment. Um... You have to play the game for 24 real-world hours on a Tuesday, starting at midnight and ending at midnight the following Wednesday. Uh, pausing does not invalidate the achievement. The game had auto-paused a few times during my first two hours, but I recommend using a wired controller and rubber banding a stick uh, to be safe and prevent the console idling. First, no matter which method you choose, go to settings, general, sleep mode, and startup. Make sure the console is set to never turn off automatically. Start the game up around 11.55 p.m. on Monday uh, to allow yourself plenty of time to load into the game. Make sure you are in gameplay when the clock hits midnight and idle the rest. The achievement will pop uh, at midnight the following day. If your console is set to home, you can go offline and set the clock to late Monday and to start the idle, but the 24 hours uh, must be idled legitimately. You can't just set the clock forward today. Okay. Well, it's not quite Monday. Uh, it's not quite Tuesday, but um, I'll, I'll just wait uh, and uh, leave the game running. Um, open up. Yeah. Reconnect them. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And uh, super go outside. Uh, wait 10 years, just kidding, do some cheating instead. I, I don't know, I may do this legit. They're closing the game. They're, yeah, they're just changing the system settings. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna do this legit. I am going. I am that fucking patient. I will wait the ten years. I'm I'm three years into the uh, first one. I'm three years into the first one. I haven't done the Tuesday uh, achievement on the other one either, but um, <sighs> don't play the Stanley Parable for ten years. I am going to leave this installed so that I can do the Tuesday achievement on this version of the game. Um, but uh, after that, I'm going to uninstall the game and come back in 10 years. Uh, I'm going to uh, clip this so that <laughs> I can remind myself um, and I will uh timestamp uh this should be timestamped but if it's not I'll I'll, I'll add a timestamp and uh um 
I'll have some really fucking good content ten years from now, proving my dedication. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be ten years to the day, um. But it, it'll be roughly ten years. Uh, I will be coming back to the original Stanley Parable in about two years from now, um, so that I can get the five years achievement on that game. So uh, in two years, and then in, uh, and then eight years after that, I will be returning to the Stanley Parable very briefly, probably on another stream. But, um, yeah, this has been the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Edition. I was a little scared at first that they were just, you know, that that the the whole gag about the lack of content thing was legit. Um, they actually did get me there, but um, I don't know. It, it was good. It was enjoyable. I liked the new content. Um, you know, maybe before before I uninstall this one, I'll go back and revisit the. Uh, the other older content that I didn't get to in this stream, but I'll be honest, I'm very tired, and also the dog definitely needs to be walked. So, um, if you enjoyed, please like, comment. I started doing my YouTube outro. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, if you enjoyed, I would greatly appreciate a follow. Um, and... Uh, also, if you could check me out on YouTube or on Twitter, um, I don't really know how to advertise my Twitter other than saying that I do Twitter stuff there. Commentary, funny stuff. I have a series of bad business ideas that uh, I will sue you over if you take. Um, <laughs> um, no, but but um, uh, if you could check out my YouTube channel, I, I would really appreciate it. We uh, recently hit 100 subscribers, and that was that was really cool. I'm going for 200 next. Uh, it seems to be speeding up a little bit, but um, yeah. Uh, that's all I've got, so thanks for joining. I hope you have a nice day. I hope to see you next time. And I don't remember the third thing that I'm supposed to say. Um... Hope you have a nice day. Hope you enjoyed and hope uh, to see you next time. There we go. Bye.